Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord as we want to transition over to the word of the living God. Uh, this morning, my name is Brother Virgil C. Passad. I'm the pastor here at the Bride Each Christian Fellowship. We are a group of, a very, very small group of individuals here who love the Lord, who is looking for the coming of the Lord. But uh, a lot of our people are those that listen on the internet. But because of the, the, the lockdown and all that stuff, we, were, we didn't have a place of fellowship. But so we operate out of our home, but uh, a lot of people are out there in their homes, they're sitting and listening to the word of the Lord, the ceiling, the ceiling of the church is the sky, amen. The pews are wherever you're sitting to listen to the word of the Lord, amen. We're hoping maybe if God will allow us to, if we have more people that will come and support us and we could go get a place, a little room or something to fellowship, to worship the Lord, then we will go and, and have a place of fellowship and worship. But in the meantime, we operate out of our home here in Orlando, Florida, and we pray those who are out there, God bless you. May the Holy Spirit pour out upon you. May you anoint your ears to hear the word of the Lord this morning. And this morning, I'd like to turn to uh, four portions of scriptures. We like to turn to four portions of scriptures. If you could have a marker, and you could, and if you can't, um, you know, get all portion. I'll read the scriptures for you uh, first. The first uh, scriptures will be in Romans chapter 8, verse 18 to 23. Romans 8, 18 to 23. The book of Romans chapter 8, 18 to 23. Then the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 31. Genesis is the first book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 31. Then one verse in the book of Matthew. Matthew 18, 18. Matthew 18, 18. And the last scripture will be John 20. The book of St. John 20, 21 to 23. The book of St. John 20, 21 to 23. Can we stand for the reading of God's word? In respect to the Lord. Romans chapter 8, verse 18 to 23. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for, waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subject the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption unto the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our bodies. And let's go straight to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 27, 20, 20, 31, 26 to 31. Genesis chapter 1, verse 36 to 21, 26 to 31. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping uh, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielded seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And let's read in Matthew chapter 18, 
Matthew chapter 18, the first book in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 18, just one verse. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. <clears throat> Verily I say unto you, whatsoever shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Let's read the other verse. And again I say unto you that if any two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Let's read the last portion of scripture, St. John 20. St. John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, St. John 20, 21 <clears throat> to 23. Then said Jesus again unto them. Now this was after the uh, resurrection. <clears throat> then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father had sent me, even so send I you. And then we, when he had said thus, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins he remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins he retain, they are retained. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word, shall we pray. Father God, I worship you. Father God, I praise you. Father God, we lift up our voices, Lord, a few minutes ago in praises, in worship and in song unto our precious Lord Jesus. And he was sitting there looking upon us, Lord, and, and receiving all his, the praises and the worship that is due unto his name. And seeing an angel up here, and Lord, standing right on the side of us, Lord, behind me, Father. And seeing your, your, feeling your presence, oh, glory to God. Feeling the anointing of your Holy Spirit that is here, Father. Oh, great eternal God, I pray this morning. Oh, eternal one that you have preeminence amongst us. May you anoint the people heirs that they may hear the word of the living God. Seeing that the time is short, Lord. Now, Lord, we have read the word, Lord. Lord, we could read it. Anyone with the intellectual knowledge could read the script here, Lord. But it takes only you who wrote this word to come out of the pages of this word and to quicken this word unto our hearts this morning. Father, we look unto you, the author and finish of our faith. Help our feeble efforts this morning. Heal the sick, Lord. Lord, raise up those that are depressed, Lord. Oh, those who need a refilling, refill them by the Holy Spirit. Lord, faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of the living God. Father, bless them, take care of them, watch over them, Lord. And we pray for our affiliate church in, in Trinidad, West Indies, Brother Sanki Rangai, Lord, you know his condition. Raise him up, Father, as a miracle, Lord, that he will confound the people that, that, that you, Lord God, is working, Lord Jesus, in this last day. Grant it, Lord God. Bless the church. Bless the Lord. Anoint them by your Holy Spirit. Touch Sister Eve also, his wife, Lord, Sister Evangeline. Lord, touch them, Lord God. And, and others who are pastors that are listening, may they dip their hand in the, in, the, in the ark, Lord, this morning with a hidden manna. And may they eat of the hidden manna this morning, that revelation will pour into their soul, that it could feed the people. Grant it, O Lord God, we pray. Bless your people now, we pray. And Lord God, all sins are under the blood. Now may your Holy Spirit now have preeminence in the name of Jesus. And use your servant, Lord, to your will. You know I have nothing really I could even think in my mind, but some thoughts and maybe some notes here that uh, I preached before, Lord, but it, it takes you. So now, Lord, have your own way, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. So we greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As I said, my name is Brother Virgil C. Passard. I'm the pastor here at the Bright Age Christian Fellowship, operating out of Orlando, Florida. We have a live service every morning, Sunday. Uh, we do want to make an announcement that um, the next service, we, I'm hoping we could do it live. It's going to be at uh, the Victory Tabernacle in St. Augustine, Florida. There, our precious brother, Keith Brown. Um, we'll be meeting with him and the church, and we'll be ministering also. We'll have a, a Saturday night service, and I'm hoping I'm there early so that I could help set it up and, and um, so we could live stream uh, on Saturday night and also live stream on Sunday morning. So you'll be blessed with a live service. Amen. Live stream, streaming from the Victory Tabernacle on our precious brother Keith Brown. And then the following... The following Sunday, there's a minister's meeting, um, and uh, we will be also fellowshipping in, uh, in Grace Tabernacle. 
um, there in South Carolina, the Lord's willing. He gave me grace to go, to drive. Uh, the Grace Tabernacle, Grace Covenant, sorry, Tabernacle, our precious brother Hughes is the pastor there. And um, we will be sitting and listening to the services. We hope that we will be able to transmit live. If we can't, I'll put a, a video on so that you uh, saints will be able to see it and, uh, and fellowship. But um, we, there's also a minister's meeting on Saturday. The, uh, the brothers are getting together in love and fellowship. Amen. Around the word of the Lord. So this morning, the, uh, our, our, our text, this morning our text is the manifestation of the sons of God. The manifestation of the sons of God. And our subject, our subject has always been our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the subject of the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation. And our subject is always the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the second Adam, the quickening spirit. Jesus Christ, the second Adam, the quickening spirit. Amen. Let me just write this down. The quickening spirit. So that's our, our subject. But what is our inspiration? Well, we have a topic. Uh, we want to know about this topic. What is this manifestation of the sons of God? And how can we come to that? How can we come to it? So uh, we, our inspira inspiration, what is inspiring us, is that Jesus Christ was a manifested son of God. So we want to know how can we understand how to come as a manifested son of God and how to come to it. And what is a manifest, manifested son of God? Now I've preached this message, uh, uh, something similar for a few, a few messages. Um, I, I think I preached this in the Evening Light Tabernacle on September 1st, 2019. And um, the manifestation of the son of God, sons of God. Um, so I, I'm just going to take some, some quotes and some notes out of there. Now what is a manifestation? What is to manifest? Now, a manifestation is an event, it's an action, or an object that clearly shows or embodies something, especially a theory or abstract idea. In other words, a manifestation is something somebody is demonstrating that someone had a thought about. So, so like in Shakespeare days, Romeo and Juliet is a manifestation of a thought that Shakespeare had. So Shakespeare had this thought in his mind and about this uh, Romeo and about Juliet and his love story and how it would be in a tragedy and, and he had it in his mind. So what he did? He wrote it down. Amen? And then the manifestation is when we had a play uh, that, uh, that manifested exactly what um, um, Shakespeare did. So that's a manifestation. So it embodies something, especially a theory or an abstract idea, an unveiling, showing, demonstration of a theory or a thought. That's what manifestation. So what do we say in the manifestation of the sons of God? What, who is a son of God? So we want to talk a little bit about who God is and who is just a brief cap because I've preached on it on many, 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 many occasions. I've preached on it. I don't have the quote, but we could read the quote later on sometime. Amen. So this great eternal father. Now, if you look in the book, uh, in the book of Matthew, and we want to also reference Matthew chapter 5, verse, I think it is 35. Hear what, hear what he says. <clears throat> in, let's just read it in Matthew chapter 5. And I think it's verse 35. <clears throat> These are the Beatitudes, what we call the Beatitudes. Amen. You know, uh, Matthew chapter 5, and it's, I'm sorry, it's verse 48. Matthew chapter 5, and it's verse 48. And it says here, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So there is a perfect God existing before the world was formed, before anything was created, before the angels were created, because the heaven was created, before anything was created, even before the logos was there, the pillar of fire, there was supreme, almighty God existing. There was no time, there's no space, there's no matter, he just exists. He's a supreme being that exists in the whole of the universe. He had no beginning, he had no end. He is just the supreme, almighty force that existing. And in his mind, now how was he existing? 
No, Brother Branham, um, we'll talk about Brother Branham. Brother Branham was a prophet to the Gentile age. William Marion Branham, he was born in 1909 and he died in 1965. But he preached a message that showed us how to prepare for, for the rapture. He showed us all the, uh, the mysteries of God. He revealed unto us he was a true prophet, an humble man. Now you may look on the internet, find all kind of stuff about him, bad. But brother and sister, what we got to look is at how God has used this man. Amen. You, 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 if you Google me, you'll find things bad about me. People say things about me. But, you, what, but watch my, your motive and objective. What is my motive? What is my objective? It's to bring people to the coming of the Lord, to bring people closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. And Brother William Aaron Barham is the, is the seventh church age messenger. If you read Revelation 1, 2, and 3, you'll see there are seven church ages, Gentile church ages, to the end of the world, to the end of the civilization as we know it. Amen. The Re book of Revelation tells you this, but in there are seven church ages for the Gentile people to come to God. Amen. God has drew, uh, left Israel. Amen. Has blinded Israel and turned to the Gentile to get a bride, to get a wife for his, his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Barabran was at Eliezer. That Eliezer that went and looked for Rebekah, for Isaac. No, we, didn't, we don't see the Lord Jesus Christ personally. We have not seen his face. Well, I mean, uh, the Hoffman head is the closest. The one behind me here is the closest that we could come to what he may look like. He may look, that's not him. But that's what we believe was close. He could come to what he looks like. Amen. So what we believe is that Jesus Christ, hallelujah, our bridegroom. We haven't seen him personally, but we love him. Amen. And, and God has have had this prophet come in, the, in this last church age and reveal on us unto uh, the scripture. Hallelujah. Reveal unto us, hallelujah, the, 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 the seven church ages. And in this last age where William Marion Branham, the messenger for the seventh age, what happened? Amen. He showed us how to prepare for great translation faith. He showed us how to get ready for the rapture. Amen. Now, if you want to know more about Brother William Marion Branham, I suggest that you go to the website www.branham.org. Amen. And you'll find about 1,000, about 300 tapes. And then the other videos and, and, mo and, um, and interviews and so on about the prophet. Amen. But the prophet has gone on, but the word is here. Revelation 10, 7 says, But in the days of the voice of the sounding of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, all the mystery of God will be finished. As he has, and then as he has declared unto his servants a prophet. So Amos, I think it's 3, says that God will do nothing unless he reveal his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Amen. So, in the days of Brother Branham, the pillar of fire, you see, I don't know if you could see it, a picture of Brother Branham is out there. Above his head seemed to be like a halo. That's the pillar of fire that followed the children of Israel in the wilderness. Amen. Now it could expand, it could get Oh, that's his great creator God. But he came in Barabranam ministry. And when Barabranam spoke the word, the sick was healed, the deaf hear, the blind see, the crippled walk. But most of all, the word of the Lord went out to the people. People received the Holy Spirit. People were filled of the Holy Spirit. People were crying out to God for salvation. And people's lives were changed. That's the important thing. Now you're sick. You could get healed, but you could get sick again. You could, you know, you could be blind, but and then you could get get deaf. You know, you don't know. But but what is most important, Hallelujah, is that once he he give you the word of God, he give you the balm in Gilead. To heal your sick soul. Amen. Your soul is healed. You're forever in the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning, the same pillar of fire that went behind Barabranam when you read the, when he spoke these words. I have some quotes. I'm, I'm believing without a shadow of a doubt that God is obligated this morning to read, to, while we read these quotes, that he will come behind the quotes, the same pillar of fire, and go into the audience, go into you wherever you're listening, and, and, and may that Holy Spirit, the fire of God, come upon you. Amen. God is obligated to do it. Because this is the prophet message. And if we read it under his inspiration, read it under his will. Amen. And read it, that same anointing must come upon you. Amen. 
So what happened? That God existed in this whole universe. And Brother Abraham said he existed as seven, uh, seven color rainbow. Amen. He, that was his attributes. That was his way. Now a lot of people say, well, Brother Zipasad, Brother Virgil, uh, you have the people confused about saying God is seven spirits. Well, go back to the Bible. Go back to the scripture. Go back to what the prophets say. I read the quote for you. Brother Abraham, many times he said that God was this great uh, fountain of seven colors. That's it. If God, if Brother Branham say that God was a, a fountain of seven colors, well, he's a fountain of seven colors. And what is a fountain? When you get in water coming out, you see the water is crystal clear. But if you see the water come out as seven colors, that's how God is. He's a fountain of seven colors. He's made up of seven spirits. And what is a spirit? You know, if you say, I don't like that guy's spirit, you know, what are you saying? You don't like his attitude, his attribute. Oh, I that, that guy is he's so loving I like his spirit that's what it is that's God seven color rainbow spirit existing before the world was even formed and that's our father God and father God said uh, uh, you know in him was all his uh, desires now God has emotion God feels pleasure God feels anger God feels loving God feels sympathy and pity Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, as a, as go, as a, a father pity at his children, so that uh, the God, God pity at um, his children. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Can someone check the temperature? It's, I feel a little bit hot here. Amen. So, uh, so God is, is um, you know, was uh, this great uh, fountain and had all his emotions inside of him. He was there. It was just sitting in him and it was bubbling up. And I use the word churning up around him. Because that's the way I, best way I could describe it. Because he is this great fountain of love and peace and joy and, and, and kindness and mercy. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. He was a great almighty God. And, and, he, and all his, emo, uh, I call it emotions, and all his feelings, and all his love he had within him, it, it came out to a climax, it came out to like an explosion that out of him came out the logos. And in that logos, you know, in that logos that came out of him was all his love and compassion and healing and creative power. It was in this logos. And then he created the angels. Now, now why did he create the angels? He created the angels to help him in, in keeping order of the universe that he's about to create. Amen. Amen. But in that Logos, Amen, Logos was the creative power. That's what it is. Logos was the creative power of God that is in the Logos. The Bible says that this Logos was the beginning of the creation of God. Amen. And the book of St. John says, uh, you know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I mean, sorry, in, in Genesis. But if you look in, first, in the book of St. John, it says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And what is the Word? The Word is a thought expressed. And the Word was this Logos that came out of God, expressed by the thoughts of God. And in this Logos was man himself amen amen so god went go ahead and he said let us make man amen let us make man in our image and our likeness now god uh, what was his image what was his likeness oh he was a great eternal one he was a great spirit amen so he made man and brother i'm saying i i don't have the quote with me that when god created man he created him um as a as a spirit amen Oh, hallelujah, as a logos, as like the logos, amen. He created man. He came as an image of God, image of God. And God was, God was not man in those days. God was an image of uh, seven eternal spirits, amen. And then God was lonely. He wanted some children. And what he did, he said he made the angels, amen. And when he made the angels, and then he started to create the heavens and the earth. And when he created the heavens and the earth, he had to set some sort of order, some sort of law that the sun must rise. And, order, uh, you know, and then, of course, Satan, somewhere around there in the beginning, Satan uh, you know, rebelled. Amen. He rebelled against God. So God saw what Satan would do. He saw that Satan could take the whole earth and plunge it by water, kill everybody, or burn it up and kill everybody, kill all his people, kill all his sons, all his daughters. So God has a law and he has angels. To, to go ahead and to and to and to um, you know to to um, to protect 
you know, those law. Amen. So when Satan comes up to the sun to take the sun to burn up the earth, there's an angel standing and say, oh no, devil, you can't do that. The law of God said, the word of God said that the sun is going to stand until the time for the new Jerusalem. So you wait, Satan. You could do nothing. Amen. Now Satan goes to the moon. He wants to throw the moon down on the earth to destroy all God's children. Nope. There are angels standing there with swords drawn. No, Satan. You can't do that. No, you can't. Satan comes down to the earth. He wants to raise up all these, all these, uh, uh, raise up all the sea and drown the whole human race. Kill everybody. Amen. Before the Lord, before the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ came upon the earth. And you know, God in the days of Noah allowed him to do that. Allow it to happen. But after that, he set angels to watch, to make sure that Satan doesn't go and cast, drown us all. He said, he sent angels to watch around you, to walk around you, to protect you. Satan wants to come and take your life. Uh, there stand an angel. Oh no, devil, you can't. She's under the protection of the Lord Jesus Christ. She's under the protection of Michael. Amen. There's an angel standing here that is protecting her. You can't touch her. You can't touch him. He's, protect, he's protected. He's special property. He's property of Almighty Elohim. Amen. Hallelujah. So we came out of the Logos and God made our souls back then. And when he made man, Adam, he who he was predestinated to come into perfection. Amen. They will come here or to come upon the earth when God told Adam, amen, that you go ahead and you will, um, you know, you will have to, um, you know, multiply and replenish the earth. How, what else was supposed to happen? The same way that God put Adam in flesh. He took up some dirt and potash and all that stuff and then put the spirit. We were supposed to come the same way. If we were to take up flesh, that's how we were supposed to come. Not through a sexual desire, not through an animalistic thing. We were supposed to come out of the ground, out of the dust of the earth. And our spirit, our, 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 our spirit was supposed to go in there and possess that, to walk upon the earth, to eat fruits, to, to, to have dominion on the earth. That's how we were supposed to be. Amen. And that's what we're talking about, a manifestation of the sun of God we are coming back onto that go oh, amen oh hallelujah oh blessed be the name of the Lord I just re want to read a something that was passed on to me praise God oh praise God wonderful so I just got a a, a, a response from a, a precious brother um, um, brother Keith Brown in, in St. Augustine blessed be the name of the Lord oh hallelujah so what we are saying we want, want to come back to that amen so so what we have to do we have to you have to understand that you are sons and daughters of God first before you come to a manifestation of the sons of God you have to come to understand as sons and daughters of God who you are amen now why why are we looking for a manifestation of the sons of God we're looking at a manifestation of the sons of God why because the the whole earth is groaning there's all sorts of volcanoes there's earthquakes all sorts of strange things in the sky funny noises they're hearing the earth is groaning the, uh, the uh, uh, you know they have uh, uh, exploded all these nuclear bombs and testing and Brother Branham say every time they, they test this nuclear bomb it, it shifts the earth a little bit it causes a disruption in God's in God's law amen and it's coming to a point brother and sister all of us on their tidal waves never in the history a recorded history have they had such a bad weather forecast that took place in California it's terrible brother it's sweeping the United States of America it's sweeping all over the world why the earth is groaning we just read it in Romans, amen, 8, that the earth is groaning and crying, oh hallelujah, this growth is groaning and crying, amen, for what? For the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God, amen, the earth is crying out, the earth is groaning, they want a release, they want to go back to when it was in the Garden of Eden, amen, this earthquake, you think the earth wants to continue quaking? No, it wants to go back as it was in the Garden of Eden, and they're looking for their king, they're looking for their, their, their God and who is the God upon the earth you my brother and my sister you, uh, you and I are, are full of the Holy Spirit we are gods upon the earth this is our domain God has made us that day of the, our domain that we could tell us the, the tree to move from here and go there river move here we could, cre we could create because we are sons and daughters of God amen hallelujah God make us as lesser gods upon the earth amen 
So the natives waiting and groaning and crying, oh, for the manifestation of the sons of God, their volcanoes, their earthquakes, and their Amazon forest is dying, it's burning, men are destroying the earth, they're taking over the earth, amen. But we have a promise this morning, oh, glory to God, we have a promise that we are coming to the manifestation of the sons of God, we're coming to take over back this earth in, in, in the millennium, amen. We're going to come in to take over the earth, but oh, hallelujah, I want to tell, give you some examples, amen, of what is going on, the part that uh, we have dominion upon the earth, we have power. We have a we have that power and authority. Amen. The power is the Lord God in us. Amen. A dominion upon the earth. Amen. Oh, praise God. Let me just read a, a quote here. Uh, Adoption, Jeffersonville, Indiana, Sunday, the 22nd of May, 1960, paragraph 19. Tell me, my brother, tell me, my sister, when was the time that the sons of God was ever to be manifested outside of this time now? When were there ever a time in the history? Amen. This, ma this manifests the time to deliver all nature. Nature. Nature itself is groaning, waiting for the time of manifestation. Why? Before the atonement was made, before the Holy Ghost was ever poured out, before all the Old Testament on down there, there couldn't have been manifestation. It had to wait for this time. Now all things have been brought, coming, shaping up to a headstone, to the manifestation of the sons of God coming back. And the Spirit of God coming into these men so perfectly until their ministry will be so much like Christ, so close like Christ, till it will join him and his church together. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Um, you see what he's, uh, end of quote, you see what he's saying? Nature is waiting and groaning now, amen, for the manifestation of the sons of God. Adoption 3, 22nd of May, 1960, Jeffersonville, Sunday. Paragraph uh, uh, 158, what's everything waiting on? What's the whole creation waiting for? The manifestations of the sons of God. It's waiting for the church to become, it's to become into its position. Who was the son of God? When Adam, where was his domain? The earth. He had domain on earth. Is that right? He wasn't El El Elohim then. He was Jehovah. See, that is, I am God and I've made some lesser ones under me. And I've given them dominion. And, and in their dominion, the dominion under them is the earth. Man had dominion over the earth. And all the whole creation is waiting for the sons of God to be made manifest. Is that right? Is that right? Waiting. God trying to place his church in position to manifest himself. Getting one that he can work through like this saying, There is my spirit flowing freely. Continue the quote. <clears throat> and there he is. I can work in here, here, get another one over here, place him. I can place him, adoption, place him, manifest him, take him out there, put a ceremony on him, visit him with an angel, tell him something. Now if he told the truth or if he's just making up something, it won't work. No, that won't work. But we got to have a lot of that. Oh, I mean, I mean manifestation of the sons of God. When God manifests himself and sends him out and then he goes forth. And, and what he says is truth. And what he says is the truth. And what he does, he manifests Christ. See? How do you judge him? By the way he stays with the word. Right with the word. See? That's how you know all men. Is by the way he stays with the word. <clears throat> if they speak not according to the word, there's no life in them, says the Bible. Then leave them away. End of quote. Oh, glory to God. So what God is saying here? Oh, praise God. That what he's looked... He's looking for. He's looking for the adoption of sons. He's doing what? He's giving him something. Amen. Visit him with an angel. Let's read that again. This is so wonderful. Amen. Adoption, place and manifestation. Take him out there and put a ceremony on him. Visit him with an angel. Tell him something. That if he told the truth, you know, tell him something. Oh, God will back it up. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. What is tell him something? Reveal unto him himself that he could speak the word. Um, adoption 2, 18.5, 1960. Paragraph 52. Now let's go back into the foundation of the world again and get a revelation and see if you are right or not. I hope I don't make myself sacrilegious by calling God Papa. But I want to say that way so you'll understand it. Papa. Papa wanted some children. So what he did, he said, let's let there be angels. 
and they come and they come around him. Oh, that's fine. They worship him. Then he was God. The attribute, remember? He was El, Ila, Elohim, self-existent, nothing but him. The first thing come around him was angels. Then angels could do no more than worship. They couldn't be lost, so they, they couldn't be sick. They were immortal beings, so he couldn't display his healing power. He didn't, couldn't display his, his salvation. So then he, no. Then after that, he said, we'll make something tangible. So he make an earth, and he made the earth, and he make all the creatures of the earth. And then he made man, everything that come up out of the earth, starting off with a polywog or jellyfish, just a form of flesh floating around in the water. Started from there, from there to a frog, which is the lowest level of life that we could find the claim is a frog highest type of life as a human being from the frog he started to the lizard from a lizard and on and on and on and every time the holy ghost begin to whoosh, bring, come again whoosh, greater life and the first thing you know something came up in the image of god that was in that was a man nothing has ever been never was never will be created anymore anything the higher than a man because a man is in the image of his God for God, amen. And when he made his first man, now when he made his angelic beings, he made man, created he them, male and female, all in the same unit. He was both man and woman, feminine and masculine. When he made Adam and put him in flesh, remember? In Genesis 1, he made man and woman. And in Genesis 2, there was no man yet to till the soil, flesh man. No man that could take a hold of anything and till the soil. And yet there was a man in his image. And God is a... And the congregation says, Spirit, that's right. See, he made the first man, male and female, he made them. And when he made the first man, amen, he made him, of course, a spirit. End of quote. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So what we're saying here, that God is a spirit. And when he made man, he made man a spirit form. He didn't put man in flesh yet until Genesis, I think, was two or three that we just read. He put man in flesh form. Amen. So you and I, hallelujah, sons and daughters of God, we were there with God in a spirit form. We may not know it because our brain cannot fathom it. We cannot think about it. You can't even fathom or think about greatest supernatural father, supernatural God. Amen. So question and answer in Genesis. Jeffersonville, Indiana, Wednesday 29, 753, paragraph 21. Now if God created man in his own image, and in his own likeness. What kind of man did he create? A spirit man. Amen. Oh, think about it. When you were formed by God in the beginning, you were what? A spirit being. You came out of the Logos. You who are alive and remain came out of that Logos. You are part of the Logos. You're the feminine part of the Logos. You're the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. You who are alive and remain. Who go unto the coming of the Lord. So what kind of man did he create? A spirit man. Amen, amen. Now if you'll notice, after he made all the creation and created a spirit man, uh, you know, um, and that God gave dominion of the cattle and the fishes and everything to the man. But his making up there, he made man in his own image to lead the cattle, to lead the beasts of the field. Just like the Holy Spirit leads the believer today. Amen. So you, so Adam, he was moving through the earth. He was a spirit being. Oh, he could probably manifest himself as a spirit being, not yet in flesh. Amen. He was a, in a theophany, walking through the earth. Amen. Speaking to the animals here. Speaking to the animals as a what? As a spirit controlling. Let's read again. He was, in, in other words, Adam, the first man in the lower creations of God. The first creation was God himself. Then out of God came the Logos, which was the Son of God. Oh, then out of the Logos, which was the Word, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And out of the Logos came forth the man. Oh, Brother Bam said, what a beautiful picture. Amen, amen, amen. He said, if you, oh, what a beautiful picture in my mind now. If you could take a little trip with me, I believe I've talked on it before. But to get this to a place where it'll be sure to see it. Now let's take a little trip and go back for a little while. Now don't think about how hot it is here. <laughs> That's strange. I was just saying it was hot here just now. So let's get our minds right on what we're going to talk about and think now. Let's go back a hundred million years before there ever was a star, moon, or anything in the world. Now, there was a time when there was nothing at all. It was just forever and eternity. And all of ever eternity was God. 
and he was there in the beginning. Now let's go there in the edge of the banister and look over and see these things. Amen. Uh, see these things happen. Now no man has ever seen the Father at any time. No man can see God in the bodily form because God is not in a bodily form. God is a spirit. See? No man has seen the Father. Only the begotten of the Father had declared him. And I interject, we will never see the supreme almighty God because he's a, he, he encompassed the whole universe. He is he, he existing. He's a, but we will see a manifestation of him in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, and then he con Abraham continued, there was no space and there was no time, there was no light, there was nothing. And then God started to, you know, cover all the spaces at all time. He was form everlasting. He was the beginning of the creation. That's God. See, you can't hear with nothing, not moving an atom here, not nothing, no air. But there, yet God was there. That was God. Amen. And what he did, out of him flowed a little sacred light, Barabram say. A little, like a little halo or something uh, that come. Amen. A little halo and we're watching. And no one has seen God. Now the next thing we see, by eyes of supernatural looking, we see a little white light forming. What is that? The Bible say the logos. The anointed, the anointing. Oh, that was a part of God beginning to develop in some, something so human being could have some type of idea what it was. It was a little light moving around. That was the word of God. And just that little light you see there, even was moving around in eternity. Amen. So that was the word of God. Now God gave himself birth to the sun, which was before. There was even an atom in the air to make an atom. See, Jesus said, glorify me, Father. With the glory that we had before the foundation of the world. Was that a scripture you read? Glorify me, Father, with the glory that I had with you before the foundation of the world. My little granddaughter brought that scripture to me last night and was pointing out there. And here it is, Brother Bram talking about it. The unfailing realities of the living God, Jeffersonville, Indiana, 26.6. 1960 paragraph 112 and when God made man in his own image he put him on the God as a lesser put him on the earth as a lesser God Jesus declared it uh, and the adoption for um, 22 5 60, 7, uh, paragraph 77 that's he's the logos that went out of God that is true that was the son of God then he made man the little God amen uh, he made man a God amen a God on, on his domain and his domain goes from sea to sea from shore to shore, he has control of it. Amen. Paragraph 80. Go back to Genesis, to the original. What is it? Now the world and nature is groaning, crying. Everything is moving. What? For the manifestation of the sons of God, when true sons, born sons, filled sons, speak the word, the word, their word is backed up. Uh, it's backed, I believe, and we're on the border of it right now. Yes, sir. Say to this mountain, let it be so. Brother, I desire certain so and so, a certain thing done. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I give it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a manifestation. Oh, brother, my crops are burning up yonder. I haven't had rain. I'll send you rain in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless your crop. Oh, waiting, groaning on nature, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. God ordained it at the beginning. He gave man the domain. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And we could go on and on and on about the quotes that Brother Branham talking about. Amen. Hallelujah. And God wanted a bride for his son. Oh, he wanted a bride to come out of that logos for his son. And that's what you and I hear in these last days. Amen. A seven color dressed up white light bride. Oh, glory. Dressed in the righteousness of the saints, which is the word of the living God. She will love him. She will praise him. She will bless his name. Oh, that's the mystery of his will. Oh, hallelujah. He, oh, praise God. His attributes produce this. Amen. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So since the beginning of time, adoption part four, since the beginning of time, uh, last part of paragraph 15, since the beginning of time of the world, a uh, predestinated us to the adoption of sons and the whole creation is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And I imagine Paul had a wonderful time. Uh, I, I'd like to have been there with him, wouldn't you? Amen. Adoption uh, paragraph 85. He gave Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ gave it in his name. Assurance. Ask 
the Father anything in my name and I'll do it. Oh, brother, Pama, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. The church, amen. God is placed in his church, sons and daughters. Oh, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. What he said, let me give you, let, let, let me live to see it. It's my prayer. It's so close that I could almost feel it, brother. I'm saying, my hand is almost like it. It's right there. That's what I've longed to see. Waiting for the time when walk down the street, there lies a cripple laying there with his mother's womb. Amen. Uh, cripple from his mother's womb. Silver and gold have I none. Glory. Waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. When God will make himself known. When they'll stop sickness. They'll stop cancer. They'll stop diseases. You think cancer is something? The Bible says there's coming time when man will rot right in their flesh. And the buzzards will eat off their carcasses even before they die. Cancer is a toothache to what's coming. But remember, the horrible thing was forbidden in that day to touch those who are the seal of God. That's what we are striving for now, to get in and be positionally placed into the kingdom of God before these horrible plagues strike. Oh, how good the dispensation of time, the fullness of time, the inheritance, end of quote. Oh, hallelujah. And uh, oh, oh, to whom would we go? Chickenaqua, Ohio, 6 6 60. Amen. Par last part of paragraph 61. Amen. Hallelujah. The whole world is waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus when men will again take the domain on the earth here and all trees and everything else will live and all animal life and everything else waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Oh, hallelujah. Show us the Father. Amen. Show us the Father. Amen. God lives in His universe. God lives in His word. God lives in His Son. Amen. God lives in his people. Amen. Man was made to be a God. His dominion is the earth. The whole earth waiting now for the manifestation of the sons of God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. And <clears throat> hear him. Amen. But notice the Bible said that the world today is groaning. Hear him. Um, paragraph 65, 08, 60. But notice the Bible said that the world today is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, God's sons to be manifest. The world is awaiting for that, for the time to come, that when God's sons, who is the ruler of the earth, the trees and the animal life, everything's waiting for a manifestation of the sons of God, when they'll be manifest on earth. Oh, come Lord Jesus is my prayer. Oh, for the great millennium, when they'll be manifested, we are getting ready for that. For this time to come, the church has got to get ready. Oh, and Brother Abraham continued to talk about man was made a, a God. So now let's look at what is this manifestations of the Son of God. I have a list of some of them. Now I don't have a list of all of them that I want to talk for for another 45 minutes. Amen. A list. Uh, and first of all is dominion, power and authority. That's what the whole thing is about. De demonstration of a manifestation. God had it in the back part of his mind. He had a thought. He had a theory. He had an abstract idea. If you want to put it that way in man's thinking. And now he's projecting it now upon the earth. And he already had a sign of it in when Adam was in the Garden of Eden. But now he's projecting it now. He wants a manifestation of his sons and daughters here upon the earth to have power, authority and dominion over the earth. Amen. Over, over, uh, just like him. He wants his sons and daughters to be just like him. All the power and authority. So they will have creative power in them also. Because they are his sons. No, exactly like uh, I always say this. I look in the mirror. I take a picture of my father. I look just like my father. I have mannerisms sometimes like my father. I talk like my father. I probably shake my head like my father. I act like my father. Amen. Why? Because I'm a seed of my father. I'm a gene of my father. My father's gene is in me. And the same thing with my son. They act like me. They talk like me. They walk my, they look like me. Amen. They are genes. Genes that is inside of them. Oh, hallelujah. Because why? You are a gene of your father. So you act like your father. You talk like your father. You be exactly like your father. Amen. So the very power and creative power that is in Christ that is in your father Elohim is in you by the Holy Spirit so there's power over the earth and the trees and the elements sorry power over the earth and the trees and the animals the power over the elements amen power over the elements the wind and the sun and the moon then power over the devils amen power and authority of a manifested son of God 
Then power over death. Amen. Power over death. Power of translation. So intercontinental, interdimensional being. Oh, here on the earth. Amen. Power uh, of uh, tra translation. Amen. Those are the five things we want to talk about. Really. Oh, power. Power over the, uh, over the earth. Amen. Power over the trees. Amen. And I'll give you an example. Jesus walked one day. He was heading out to Jerusalem. Um, he was, uh, remember those five things. Power over the earth. Power over the elements. Power over devils. Power over death. Power over translation. Amen. As a manifested sons and daughters of God. So number one, power over the earth. Remember Jesus. He was heading out one day. He was uh, going up to Jerusalem. He was going to preach in the temple. And he left before uh, Lazarus and Mary and Martha had cooked breakfast. They didn't get up and make their bread and didn't make their, their, their vegetables. They didn't ready ready for him yet. He got up very early. So he left the house without eating. And I would always I would say probably his blood sugar was a little low. He was getting feeling a little weak. He needed something to eat. So he came up to this fig tree. And probably at this fig tree at this time supposed to have fruit. But when he came up to the fig tree, what? There was no fruits. What did Jesus said? He said, no, no man may be of you again. In other words, he took the life back out of the tree. Amen. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Power over the, power over the, the earth. Amen. Power over the trees. Now, Adam. Amen. Let's just may have a little example. And I give this example so many times. I had power over the trees, over the rivers, over the earth. Amen. He had power. What happened with Adam? Adam, when Eve was sitting quietly on one side of the bank of the river, and they all fellowshipping and talking about the wondrous work of the Lord. And Eve said, you know, Adam, across the river, there's this apple tree. Amen. This, uh, no, that's a peach tree. All across the river, Adam, you know, there's a lovely peach tree. You know, I would sure like that peach tree to come and give us shade. And, and I could reach out and get a peach and eat a peach. And I'm say, Adam said, no problem, honey. I'll get it for you. Adam didn't go and look to make a shovel. He didn't go and look to, to have a boat. He didn't do all that. No, he didn't make a boat and cut down some trees and make a boat and get a shovel and all. No. Adam looked at the pear tree and said, Pear tree, you, pear tree, rise up. Come over here and right where Eve and I are sitting. Come and plant yourself here and let one, let an apple drop into her lap. And what happened? As soon as the word was spoken by Adam, a manifested son of God, Adam, manifested dominion on the earth. What happened? The tree roots started to come out like that. It came out of the ground. The tree roots, it walked across the river. It walked across the river. Came right exactly to the spot where Adam said, dig itself down into the ground and settle itself in the ground to get, and lean over to give shade to Eve and what happened then dropped a, a pear right in Eve's, Eve's lap what was that? a manifestation of the son of God a manifestation of Adam that's what we're going back to we're going back to power, authority oh, and dominion over the earth amen over the animals Adam could have called the, the, the big lion he made a big roar and I said come here kitty Come here and pat him. Oh, okay, don't worry, don't worry. Everything is all right, Kitty. And, and the lion will turn over and let our Adam rub his belly. You know, big lion. The bear will come and nudge Adam and want a little love in there too. Amen. All these ferocious ele elephants walking on the earth, shaking, come and want a little touch from Adam also. Uh, what it is? The manifestation of sons and daughters of God. We're coming back to that power. We're coming back to that anointing. Amen. Hallelujah. Power over the elements. Oh, hallelujah. Power over the elements. A manifested son of God. Now what happened? Brother, uh, uh, brother, our, our Lord Jesus was in a boat. Hallelujah. They were going to the sea the, he was so tired he was so exhausted virtue went out of him he was lying in the boat taking a nap the sea was all turning uh, there were about 10,000 demons all around say aha we're going to drown him today we're going to kill him today oh yes we're going to take his life we're going to uh, uh, you know capsize the boat and they were and the devils were throwing all kind of storm and and the boat was taking in water and Jesus sleeping imagine that he is all wet with water and he's taking a nap amen son of God manifested son of God so what it was the, 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 um, the disciples wake him up Jesus don't you care we dying 
We're going to sink. Look at the waves. Look at the wind. Look at the lightning. Look at the storm. The sail broke. We are dying, Jesus. Save us. Jesus stood up. He said, O ye of little faith. And he put one foot on the bow of the, of the, the boat and said four words. Peace. Be, three words. Peace be still. Three words. Peace be still. Jesus didn't call for them. Lord, let's have a prayer meeting. Let's get down in the boat and pray. Let us go. Let us see if we can have a sacrifice. Let us fast. Let us pray. Let us call on God. No. He was a manifested son of God. He put his foot on the boat. Hallelujah. The bow. I said, peace be still. Oh, and what happened? Oh, the sea obey him. The waves obey him. Oh, calm. They all were scared. I could imagine Peter looking at it. What kind of man is this? Amen. What kind of man is this? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, peace be still. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who was this? A manifested son of God. A manifested word. Amen of God. Now, Joshua in the Old Testament. Joshua was fighting a battle. God tell him, yes, you're going to win that battle. Joshua had a problem. It was getting nighttime. And what was going to happen? These are Malachites and them run away and hide in the bushes and Israel would not be victorious oh what did Joshua do he said sun stand still moon hang over Ajalon a man he didn't have the Lord Jesus he didn't have the fullness of the baptism of the Holy Ghost that is upon you what did he do brother Branham say he stopped the sunlight now the sun itself the sun itself didn't stop is the sunlight he stopped amen when he said sunlight it was sunlight brother Branham say it stopped Amen. The sun was going down, but the, the sunlight stopped. Amen. And that was a phenomenon. What was it? Manifestation of the Son of God in, 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 in um, Joshua. Oh, praise God. Amen. My nose just tickling this morning. My allergy has started. <laughs> but um, away with all these allergies. Amen. What was it? Power over the elements. Power over the elements. And I could go on and talk more about Jesus walking on the water. Oh, hallelujah. We want to talk about number three, power over devils. Amen. Now, who is, who is more important? A son of God or an angel? Who is more important? A son of God. Amen. But Abraham say, you have more power than the archangel. Would you believe this? They are servants. They are servants unto you. You have more power than the archangel. You are ruler on the earth. Amen. And Brother Abraham says, because you have that light that is inside you. Oh, glory, hallelujah. So who has more power? The Son of God. So you with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have angels at your command. You have the elements. You have that. You don't let anything get to you, brother. Some, some evil spirit rising up, speak it. Satan, get away from here. No, Jesus, hallelujah. He, Jesus went to the, he went to the, 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 um, I uh, think there was Gaza, Gazarath, I'm not so sure how to pronounce it, where there was a man full of devils. Amen. And this man was full of devils. He was rip himself, he would tear himself. And when, when, he, when he saw Jesus, he come out of the tombs and said, Oh you, I have nothing to do with you. What do you have to do with us? And Jesus said, oh, Who are you? He said, We are legion. We are many. We are possessing this man's body. Jesus said, Leave the man. And the, the, the legion, the demon said, Oh, yeah, please, 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 uh, send us in the pigs. Send us in the pigs. And Jesus said, Go ahead. And they went. And the demons listened. Amen. What was that? Manifested Son of God with power and authority over the devils. Speak to the devil, brother. Don't let He's a bluff. He's a bluff. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Remember Mary Magdalene. Seven devils came out of her because Jesus cast out those demons out of her so you my brother and sister manifestation of the sons of God amen power over death this is a critical part because when Adam died before Adam died he, he had absolute death couldn't even come near him before the fall I'm sorry in the garden of Eden death couldn't even come near him absolutely couldn't even come near him why because he was a manifested son of God and their power over death now Jesus Christ conquered death, hell, and the grave. Amen. Jesus Christ went to uh, Lazarus' grave. Amen. Lazarus was dead four days. And when Jesus got there, he went on his knees. He cried because that was his friend. But when he raised up and he spoke the voice of the archangel, what was it? He had power over death. 
Amen. Where Jesus was, when Jesus was around, there's no, no one could die. No one could die when Jesus, the, the voice of the resurrection was around. Amen. So he had power over death. Hallelujah. What did he do? He said, Lazarus, come forth. And a man who was dead for four days. There was nowhere in the Bible written like this. Nowhere. This is the only manifestation of a son of God that's going to take place with you here in this last days. Oh, what about Jairus' daughter? This little girl was dead. Jesus said, oh no, she's sleeping. Everybody laughed at him. He put them all outside. And he only had Peter, James, and John. And he had um, the, the parents of the child. And he said, little, little girl, uh, you know, arise. And she rose up. Who was that? A manifested son of God. Power over death. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus went down into hell. Amen. He died on the cross. And when he went down into the hell, what he did? He took the keys of death, hell, and the grave away from Satan. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Power of translation to move from one place to the other. Amen. Jesus walked through the walls after he, was a, as a, after he raised from the dead. He walked through the walls. Amen. Here's another instance. Now, Jonah. Amen. Jonah was swallowed by a whale. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. He was swallowed by a whale. And the whale vomited out on the seashore. Now the Bible say that Nineveh was a three-day journey from where Noah, Jonah was. But the Bible say that Jonah started preaching in the first day. So what happened? Jonah was translated from the way he was into three days journey into the city of Nineveh. What was that? A manifestation of the Son of God. The power of the Son of God. Amen. Jesus walked through the walls. Jesus appeared here. Jesus appeared there. What was it? A manifestation of the Son of God. Now Philip in the book of Acts. Amen. Acts 5 and 26 is a testimony of Philip. Philip was somewhere in Samaria, I believe it was. And he was, uh, I think he was preaching or something. I'm, I'm not so sure exactly where he was. He was preaching and so on. Amen. I think he was in Samaria. Either he was in Samaria or in the Gaza. I'm not so sure. And he was preaching. Amen. And he was taught. And the, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and said, Now go. Amen. Go and um, I, I'm, I, I'm going to send you somewhere. And Philip was translated about 100 miles. I checked it on the map. It was about 100 miles. And there he met the Ethiopian eunuch. Amen. And there the Ethiopian eunuch was reading the Bible. And, they, and the angel of the Lord said, go and talk to him. And he went up and talked to him. And the Ethiopian eunuch was saved. That's a manifestation of the Son of God. Two things happened there. One, it was uh, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaking unto, unto um, uh, uh, Philip, amen, and translating him, changing his body into interdimensional body, tra travel through time and went and meet this uh, name, um, meet um, the Ethiopian eunuch, amen. Oh, hallelujah. So you say, well, brother Virgil, all that is manifestation in the Bible. You know, it's a promise. It's all in the Bible. We read it. It's wonderful. Well, I'm going to show you where the manifestation of the sons of God, a son of God took place right in our age. Amen. And you could read about it too. Amen. Number one. Hallelujah. The manifestation of the son of God. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. The manifestation of the son of God is number one. You know, power over the earth, power over the animal. Amen. We're going to show it in Brother Branham's life. Amen. Power, you know, giving life. Amen. Over death. Amen. Power speaking to the storm. And then most of all, power through him that Jesus could forgive. Amen. Forgive sins. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Remember that verse we read in, in St. John 20? It says, um, you know, whosoever sins you remit, they're remitted. Whoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So what we are saying this morning, brother and sister, we run out of time, it seems. Well, we have some time. First of all, we, let's talk about you know, power over, power over the, the, the manifest, power over the earth, power over the animals. Amen. Now, brother Branham had a, 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 um, a testimony that the Lord wanted to show him uh, the creation power of the Son of God, of a Son of God. Amen. He, Brother Branham was hunting squirrel. And Brother Branham was, was, was praying and meditating. And God tell Brother Branham, speak and say wherever you want the squirrels. Now, uh, Brother Branham said, I need a squirrel over there. And suddenly the squirrel appeared. Brother Branham shot it. And then five, I think it was five squirrels. 
squirrels that he shot them. Now he took these squirrels home and I think he gave it to a sister Woods. I think it was to put in a refrigerator. Now they eat squirrels and so on. So they put it in the refrigerator and the sister would testify that when they took that squirrel, amen, to clean it, to dress it, to cook it, the squirrel didn't have a belly button. The squirrel didn't have a belly button. Why? It was created. If that squirrel had a belly button, that means that squirrel was born somewhere and appeared somewhere. The squirrel did not have belly buttons like us. Adam didn't have a belly button. Amen. Think about that. Amen. The, the squirrels had no belly button. They were created. They weren't born of their mother. Amen. So then well, we talk about uh, the manifestation of a son of God. Now we want to talk about the manifestation of a son of God or power, power over the elements. Amen. Brother Branham was going one day in the, in the woods and hunting and the storm was coming. Amen. And the Holy Spirit said, go back, go up into Hurricane Mountain. Go up to the top up there. But Brother Branham said, but Lord, I could be trapped here for, for, for weeks. Amen. With this mighty storm, they wouldn't be able to find me. I don't have enough food. The Holy Spirit said, go up. And Brother Branham went up. And when he went up to the top there, the Holy Spirit, the angel of the Lord told him, speak to the storm. And Brother Branham spoke to the storm as a manifested son of God. And when he spoke to the storm, he said, storm, go away uh, uh, and sun, come out and shine for three days. And with a few, few minutes, just like that, the storm ended. It was a, a normally, they say in the weather forecast, they couldn't understand the storm disappear. What was it? It's a manifestation of a son of God. That power is in you now with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Another time, we're talking about now life. Amen. We're talking about life. Amen. Resurrection. Power over death. Amen. Here with us, Brother Branham was, uh, was in a boat fishing. And while he was boat fishing, the Lord tell Brother Branham, Are you going to see the, uh, the resurrection? You're going to see resurrection. I think of a, of a creature. Amen. And Brother Branham was fishing and, the, and the, one of the brothers pulled up a little, a little fish. And when he pulled the, the hook out, he pulled all the guts and everything out of the, of the little fish. And he threw the little fish back into the water. And say, little fish, well, you shot your last one. So the fish was dead. Amen. And then after a while, the Holy Spirit came down and, to, and told Brother Branham, the angel of the Lord, said, stand up on your feet. And Brother Branham stand up on your feet in his boat. He said, speak to the little fish. And in the front of these two brothers, Brother Branham spoke to the fish. He said, little fishy. I give you back your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And suddenly the guts went back into the little fish. The little fish flapped up his open his mouth, flapped his fins and went away. What was that? A manifestation of a son of God. That power is in you this morning. Oh Lord, help me this morning. Oh Father, that he could see that what it is uh, that God is doing in these last days now. Amen. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. So, Brother Branham, amen. What he did, amen. Oh, praise God. Sister Hattie Wright, amen. Oh, praise God, Sister Hattie Wright. Oh, she said, she said the right thing. What did Brother Branham do? Oh, the Holy Spirit took up Brother Branham. Amen. He said, tell her whatever she wants. Whatever. Gave it to her. And what happened? He said, I need the salvation of my two sons. And there the Holy Ghost, the power of the angel of the Lord came down. And, and her two sons fell upon their knees and cried out and received the salvation, the Holy Ghost. Oh, what it is? Manifestation of a son of God. Oh, you may have family out there. You may have loved ones out there. You may have children one out there. Oh, the Bible says that our loved ones will be with us. Our children will be with us. Amen. What's going to happen? The word of God is going to come to you. And you're going to speak that word. And they're going to be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. You are an overcomer. Oh, praise God, you're an overcomer. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So, so how do we get to that, Brother Sipasad, Brother Virgil? How can we come to that? <clears throat> Amen. The Bible says, repent, be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and the promises unto you and to your children and to those that are far off. So the first thing you must receive is that Holy Ghost. Amen. And when that Holy Ghost comes upon you, it is that foundation. You have to build word upon word.
upon word upon word upon that Holy Ghost till you come to perfection and then when you reach to a certain point in perfection when you climb that pyramid to that top amen what is going to happen dynamics will come upon you the refilling of the Holy Ghost will come upon you amen and that which you have worked in a small measure oh God is going to refill you and I'm going to read the quotes so how do we come to it brother and sister by dynamics by the refilling of the Holy Spirit first the Holy Ghost and build word upon word upon word so it is I, Grande Prairie, AB, um, 1761. <coughs> Amen. Second part of paragraph 72. It's God in you. All, oh, sorry, let me just read it a little before that. And Jesus said, At that day, you will know that I'm in the Father, the Father in me, and I in you, and you in me. It's God in you. All that God was, He poured into Christ. And all Christ was, He poured into the church. So it's God above us. God with us and God in us. No wonder we are commissioned to baptize using Father, Son and Holy Ghost. It's not three different God. Three offices of one God. See, God above us in the Father. God with us in the Son. Cleansing His way. Condescending, coming down. Making a way for me to get back. To bring the people back to the manifested, manifested sons of God. Like they had in the Garden of Eden. The whole world is groaning and waiting for that hour. For the manifestation of the Son of God. Turn on the light. Phoenix, Arizona. 25, 164. Paragraph 164. It's the word. It's the word turn on. The light turns on the mechanics. And it becomes dynamics. They are dynamics. When the dynamics... When the dynamics comes to mechanic, it starts the thing a rolling. What shall I do with Jesus called the Christ? <coughs> 24, 11, 1963, paragraph 116. Listen to this closely. The dynamics of this church will be a refilling of the Holy Spirit that we have worked in a small measure while the headstone is coming down to your night to the body. The dynamics is the Holy Spirit. End of quote. So what I'm saying here, brother and sister, what he's saying he said, while the headstone is coming down, you know, <clears throat> the headstone ain't completely come down yet, you know. He said, while the headstone is coming down, the dynamics of the church will be a refilling of the Holy Spirit. So the headstone ain't come yet, but the dynamics of the Holy Spirit is falling upon us, the refilling of the Holy Spirit. And the dynamics is what? Is the Holy Spirit. But the headstone hasn't come down fully yet. He brought Abraham, let me read it again. The dynamics of this church it will be a refilling of the Holy Spirit that we have worked in a small measure while the headstone is coming down to unite with the body. The dynamics is the Holy Ghost. Oh, now the Spirit, the dynamics of that promised word to get into the church, amen, uh, his church, and then drive them into Calvary yonder and to the rapture. And there we are. He is the dynamics of the mechanics, amen. Looking on to Jesus. We doing good? Looking on to Jesus, um, Phoenix, Arizona, 12 1, 1964, paragraph 77. Mechanics ain't what run the automobile. It's the dynamics that runs it. The mechanics can run the church. It's the dynamics, the Holy Ghost that gets into his word. It's not a seminary that teaches you all the theology and the Greek interpretation, but it's the dynamics of the Holy Ghost in there to set that afire and to bring it to pass, and to make it live, just exactly what the promised word is for this hour. Not the mechanics, the dynamics. It takes mechanics and dynamics, the word and the spirit. They are one that gives life. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, and what shall I do with Jesus called the Christ? Jeffersonville, Indiana, Sunday the 24th, 11, 1963, morning service. Paragraph 115. Let me say something too. This uniting time to see churches uniting, nations uniting. It's a united time of God and his bride too. And I say this with reverence and respect. I believe that the bride of Christ is called. I believe she is sealed in the kingdom of God. I believe the mechanics is here, is there. They are waiting for the dynamics that will take her off the earth into glory in the rapture. I believe it with all my heart. Yes, sir. We don't know how he's going to do it. But he shall do it. He is the dynamics. We just become members of the machine of his body. Forming ourselves into his image. And see him uniting himself with us in his works. With his love gifts. As he hands them to us just before the wedding supper. And we are waiting and watching for that. When is going to happen? End of quote. When is it happen? Just before the wedding supper. So is it now brother and sister? Dynamics is here. Amen. Michael is here. The voice of the archangel is here. Believe this brother. Oh what? While the 
stone is coming down. The dynamics is a refilling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. What shall I... This is 1963. What shall I do with Jesus called the Christ? Jeffersonville, Indiana. Sunday the 24th, 11, 1963. Morning service. Amen. Oh, praise God. Oh, I just read this quote. I believe the mechanics is here. Brother Bram said that. They're waiting for the dynamics. They'll take our flow into glory, into the rap. There's a rising of the sun. Jeffersonville, Indiana. At the 18th of April, 1965. Morning service. Sunday. Morning service. Praise God. <coughs> Hear what Brother Ram say, paragraph 112. All these Easter bunnies and things, ceremonies and big churches and finery will fail and pass away until the church becomes both dynamics and mechanics and the Spirit of God that moved him to do the things that he did. If he hit 16 cylinders, so will the bride. Amen. For he said in John 14, 12, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. I'll give him a charge of my dynam dynamics in his mechanics that the world will not be able to withstand it. And I'll raise him up again at the last day. That's the Easter message. The dynamics and the mechanics together. The mechanics without the dynamics, no good. Neither is the dy dynamics without the mechanics. Oh, it just, you can scream and shout. You could jump up and down. You all you want and deny this word. It wouldn't do you any good. You're just cranking around the pistons. Got the spark there to fire, but the gasoline to fire it, but no gasoline to fire it. It will only work as they come together. Amen. No one, no one, uh, so one will set still and the other one will go up. That's the only thing that is to, that is to it. Yet they have both have and look alike. Both claim to be churches. Both claim to be bride. But the one has mechanics and dynamics. It brings it to pass of what he said is the truth. And it just won't move. No matter how good the mechanics is. Until the dynamics come. When the dynamics come. Now remember the dynamics is the Holy Ghost. So wherever you hear me saying dynamics. You could put Holy Ghost. The dynamics is the Holy Ghost. It's a special anointing. It's a special power. Remember that. Continue the quote. And when the dynamics come, that fire is made to contact with that octane in the gasoline. And when that explodes, it, it causes a combustion. And that combustion moves every motion, every move. For he is the same yesterday, today and forever. That's the resurrection. That's the real power of God. Mechanics and dynamics. Notice, if it's, it's the spirit that quickens and it's the spark that fires. It's not the gas that fires. It's the spark that fires the gas Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Paragraph 79, right? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Israel and the church. Jeffersonville, Indiana. 28-3-1953. Quote Brother Branham. Paragraph 79. And I believe we are on the borderline tonight. I was wondering all about my meetings and thing, things. How I had to cancel them out. I truly believe before the church can have the rapture. They got to have rapture and faith. We can't even have faith for divine healing, let alone rapture and faith. Got to have a faith that will change and quicken this body and be taken away. I believe there's a church on its road tonight. A power of the living God that men will speak the word here and there and it will flash like lightning. Oh, praise God. Amen. Adoption 3. Adoption 3. Amen. Praise God. I truly believe, believe, truly believe before the church can... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, adoption 3, paragraph 85. Positionally placing... Adoption positionally... Uh, placing positionally. Where they are? Show me where they are. God's calling His children aside by manifestation. You don't have to say one word about it. You see some things happen. Positionally placing His Son... Getting him into order just exactly with the same things. And he's just as in much authority. His word is just as good as an archangel. Didn't we? I just say that a few minutes ago. Amen. The son was adopted. Put in a high place. Set out there. Change his robe. Change his colors. The father had a ceremony. This is my son. From henceforth he's governor. He's the ruler. He's over all my health. All that I got belongs to him. That's right. Then we go back to the same Elah, Elah, Elohim. And he's a self-existent one. And then come back through Jehovah who made something. He gave dominion over the earth. What are we waiting for? 
the manifestations of, and I interject the Son of God. The earth is groaning. The earth is crying. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Let's get down to it and read it. All right. Predestinated to the adoption of children by himself, according to his good and pleasure of his will, to the praise, to the praise of his glory. What is his grace? Praise of his grace. Glory of his grace. What is his grace? Back before. Was their father, his grace, his love made himself a child that we might be predestinated unto the adoption of children to the praise of his grace. See, wherein he had made us acceptable by the what? The person beloved, which is Christ, made us acceptable how? By him. How we get into him? By one spirit, all baptized into him. Listen, in whom we have redemption, we have redemption to his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Amen. End of quote. So what we are saying here this morning, brother and sister, we are saying that, that the whole world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. The whole world is waiting to see Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. You must climb the seven steps to perfection. You must have Christ in you. Amen. God must show that He is living in you. He's going to take you aside. Amen. Visit you with an angel. Give you something. Amen. Amen. And that was inside of you will grow faith upon word upon word upon word until the very manifestation of the dynamics is going to take place. You will speak the word. It will flash like lightning. But you'll do nothing until your father show you first what is it brother manifestation of the sons of god now you're going to be just like jesus amen why your flesh of his flesh your bone of his bone your spirit of his spirit you're going to be just like jesus he walked on water you could walk on water too he raised the dead hallelujah will raise the dead too he spoke the word amen hallelujah and the wind and the waves and the sea obey him you can do that also by being a manifested son and daughter of god you are flesh of his flesh. You are bone of his bone. You are his bride. He said, go ahead, my sweetheart. Go ahead. You said, Lord, uh, this brother here need rain. You said, go ahead, sweetheart. Talk to him. Tell him, give it to rain. And you said, brother, I give you rain in the name of Jesus Christ. This one is sick. This one has a, a, is crippled. He has a need. You said, silver and gold have I none. You put your hand in your pocket. You are bankrupt. There's no more currency again, any, any no longer. They have digital currency. They took all your money from your bank. Amen. But there's a crippled sister in a wheelchair. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What you do? You say, sister. Amen. I have no more currency. Silver and gold have I none. I have no money, no bank. They took it all. Amen. But what I have as a manifested son of God, what I have is the power of dynamics upon me. What I have is that I'm a son of God. That word that comes out of me is a dominion upon the, the earth. Sickness have no control over you, sister. I give you, amen, the portion of that dynamics and the angel of God comes down and, vindicate and the sister rise up on her wheelchair. What is it? A manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. They close the door. They say you can't preach no more. They, let's say they close the door. It's going to happen. You have no money as we talk about. Do you, did they say you have to take this digital, digital implant in your body because people could take a phone and take your phone and take your money out of the bank. Oh, but you can't take, you'll have to cut your hand off. And still, it's, it's connected to your, to your body and the body heat. Amen. So you have to have something according to what they're saying. And it's already in, in there, bro brother and sister. It's already been made manifest. Some people have it in their job. When they go through the door, they just wave their hand like that. And they go through the door. Tit, 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 tit. Oh, Joe, that's, jo uh, um, that's Bill Thompson. Okay, he clocked in at, uh, uh, at 7.59. Bill Thompson. And he goes about your business. When you're leaving for the... You go out. Oh, he clocked out at, at, uh, at 5.02. That's Bill Thompson. Okay, he's ready uh, for lunch. Uh, he got his hour lunch. Okay, he'll get paid. You go to the machine. It's happening already, brother and sister. It's happening already. Go to the vending machine. You need uh, the juice. You get it. You know, it comes out. No money. A digital currency. 
That's what's going to take place, brother and sister. So when the time comes and you can't, uh, you can't get money in your bank, you can't, uh, you know, you can't buy food, you can't, you know, you're just sitting in there. Oh, what will happen? Amen. Manifestation of a son of God. Just like Jesus broke the bread and feed 5,000. You had a little bit of corn, little bit of, um, let's say, pancake mix. You have a little bit of pancake mix and some water and you have uh, some oil, some, some, um, uh, uh, you have a little bit of um, uh, olive oil and you have a pancake mix and that's all you have. Amen. Remember what did Elijah say? The barrel of meal will not, will not end, will not, will not uh, fail and the cruise of oil will not end, will not finish. That's what he says. So you, the spirit of Elijah will rest upon Elisha. The bride is Elisha. Where well, you going to look at it now? And by you know, by being a manifested son and daughter of God, you say this pancake mix that's in box will not finish. Amen. Oh, that's the word of the Lord. Because what? You have become the word of the Lord. That's why the headstone is descending. Still, you know, it's going to happen while the headstone is descending. You're going to look at a pancake mix. And you're going to say, this pancake mix is not going to fail. And a little bit of oil that is in the, in the, um, in the, the olive oil bottle. You're going to throw it on, uh, on the, on the, on the, um, the, uh, 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 the skillet on the stove. You throw it in there and you put it back and the oil comes back up. You take some pancake mix, you mix the, you, mi you empty out the pancake in a bowl, you mix it up, you make pancakes for you and your children. And when you put the, the box back, oh, oh, the pancake mix come all the way back up. Oh, glory to God. What is that? Manifestation of a son and daughter of God. Oh, hallelujah. Your child is out there. Amen. Your child is bound up in sin. Amen. But God promised, God reveal unto you. Now speak the word for your son. Speak the word for your daughter. Speak the word. Hey, and you speak the word. Now California sunk into the sea. Amen. They all come crying. They all, all your family and friends and relatives. They come crying. Oh, California sink into the sea. Oh, what are we going to do? Brother Brown really prophesied that. You have been preaching that all the time. California is going to sink. It has happened. Oh, what am I going to do, brother? What am I going to sister? Oh, praise God. Amen. Oh, I, need, I need God. And what? You'll speak that word to them. And that word will transform them. Amen. Just before the sleeping scenes arise. That's what I believe. Oh, what is it, brother and sister? Manifested son of God. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted. Whosoever sins you are retained, they are retained. Oh, praise God. The Holy Spirit. The dynamics. That is what is upon you, my brother and my sister. Dynamics to your mechanics. That is the Holy Spirit. No, you're not doing this, you know. You are yourself. It is what? Is that seed word that is inside of you? Manifestation of the sons of God. Manifestation. Oh, of God coming down in human skin. God in you the hope of glory. What is it brother? The world is looking for our Jesus returning. Amen. In a Palestinian garment. They're looking for Christ. Amen. To come back and make everything right in the world. The only Christ they're going to see first is the Christ in you. This bride of Jesus Christ is going to have a 40 day resurrection ministry. I say 30 or 40 days. We don't know exactly. God, I de Jesus had a 40 day resurrection ministry. That's why I type it as 40 days. But what's going to happen? The bride would have a 30 or 40 days resurrection, 30 to 40 days resurrection ministry. What she'll have? The power of the Holy Spirit would be upon her. But the, the love of God would be upon her so much. She'll only be just 30, 40 days upon the earth. When charity drops down upon her, she'll only be 30, 40 days. And then Jesus will make his appearance in the sky. And I believe the Bible says just as Jesus left Jerusalem, he's going to return. Amen. The, the Jews will see him coming. But the bride will be caught up there to meet him in the air. And they will tell Moses and Elijah. But wait now, we've seen the power of God in these people, in these Gentile people. Look how they're praising God. Look how they're doing signs, wonders and miracles. What is it? This is what we're looking for. This is the Messiah we're looking for. Why are they going to see Christ? bride. Brother Abraham said they will see the power of God. Amen. That's how he'll make himself known. He will be seen. He will not come down physically, you know. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming down physically to make himself known unto the bride. No, he will not meet with them until in the new Jerusalem. Amen. Oh, even the millennium, he's coming down a shine of glory. But Christ, the anointing going to be veiled in the bride. Jesus Christ is not going to walk on this earth until this earth is burnt by every single demon. This earth is burnt by fire, which is after the, uh, the millennium. 
Christ is going to veil himself on the throne of your heart. But they're going to rebuild the temple. And what is going to happen? The Shekinah glory is going to come between the cherubs once more. But who is going to be walking upon the earth as Jesus Christ? A manifestation of the Logos that came out of God. It will be the bride of Jesus Christ. She will have a testimony. And this is what I'm trying to show the, 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 uh, some ministers. I'm showing them that the bride has a testimony for the world. That even the Jews will see it. Now I'm not saying we going to physically go and preach to them the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I don't know. The prophets say that Moses and Elijah will come forth. Now Abraham he veiled something. But if you go back to the Bible, you would see when just before Joseph make himself known unto his, 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 uh, his, uh, his, uh, his uh, brethren, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Before where he identified Christ the Messiah, what happened? They came for a dinner, amen, in Joseph's house. And Joseph was sitting there with his wife and children having dinner a little way off. So the, these people were seeing the bride of Joseph. They were seeing Manasseh and Ephraim. They were seeing them. And then Joseph, when he looked at Ephraim, and he looked at uh, uh, Benjamin, and he saw the resemblance. And he saw, oh my, you know, that, uh, you know, that in Ephraim and, uh, and Manasseh. Oh, they're just like their uncle. Oh, they were so, he was so taken up. He tell his wife, go back to the palace. Everybody leave me. And then he made himself known. That's Moses and Elijah. But they saw the bride sitting next door to uh, Asenath. Sitting next door to, next to, um, to Joseph. Because they were eating dinner. They all... He had a feast. Amen. So don't tell me that the bride is not going to be a testimony. No, I'm not saying that we are going to tell them, we're going to preach to them the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I don't know fully, brother. Moses and Elijah. Maybe Moses and Elijah will point to us for that 30, 40 days. And they'll have three and a half years to come to repentance, to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to come to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So God bless you richly, brother. How can you come to this manifestation of the sons of God? Repent, be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. When you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, it is the foundation. You just start to live, you just start to grow and on that you must add word upon word upon word upon word. A test must come to you for faith and you must overcome it by the Holy Spirit. A test must come to you by virtue. You must overcome it by the Holy Spirit. A test must come to you by knowledge. You must overcome that test. Amen. You must uh, to get to the next you must overcome every step all the way to brother love, brother kindness. Oh, when they condemn you, when they beat you up, when they say all kind of evil against you. Oh, you love them, you forgive them. When they ostracize you, when they excommunicate you. Oh, because you don't want to talk with us, brother. You don't want to have a, a, a conference with us, brother. Oh, because you don't want to be excommunicating you. Oh, we move, we, we, you're, not, you're no longer our group. Amen. That could minister to the, to the group. Amen. Oh, praise. It's not a church, you know. Oh no, it's not. There's no rules, there's no regulations there in that church. According to the Bible, there's a group of people. Amen. That whoever comes speak. Amen. And sometimes they don't say things that are that are really right according to the prophet message. But I don't say nothing about it. Amen. But I want you to know, brother and sister. Amen. You you can't condemn me for what I believe if I show it in the prophet message. Don't tell me people confuse. If they're confused, if it was in the church they're confused, and that's a pastor. Then we will talk to them if I was a pastor. But if they're confused, let them go and ask pastor. You explain it to them. Show them in the Bible. Now why do you want to have, why do you want me to sit there and, 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 and three, uh, uh, you know, throwing questions at me and throwing things against me and throwing, showing where, I, you know, where I'm wrong. Why am I have to do that, brother? I'm not going to sit there, uh, a, 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 a bunch of, a group of, 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 of Pharisee and Sanhedrin spirits. To accuse me of these things. You have all my messages. You know what I preach. I'm not moving. Sorry. I'm not moving. Now when I go to someone's church. And invite me to the church. And they don't believe fully what I believe. I will not preach that to them. Oh no. I'll preach something wonderful to encourage the people. To get closer to the Lord. But of this pulpit here brother. Amen. God instruct me to say it. Amen. Oh praise God. So you could ostracize me. You could condemn me. You could throw me off. You could, uh, you know, you know what it is? Excommunicate me. That's fine, brother. 
Amen, my Father in heaven. When my father, when my father, my mother on the earth here, you know, come against me, or not mother, but come against me, but forsake me, or my children, or the people, God will take me up. Brother, show me where it's wrong. I always say that. Show me where it's wrong, but one on one. Don't bring a whole gang of people to come to sit down. Oh, you seven thunders. Or um, the Barbara Abraham says seven thunders, seven seal. Where? Don't take one. Go to. I went through that already. I preached it in the in the group. I preached it in all my messages. Go and look it up. Find the course. Oh, you saying seven spirits of God? Well, that's the Bible. That's in Brother Abraham's message. Brother Abraham said God is made up of seven color rainbow spirits. I didn't say it. Go take it up with the prophet. No. Go take it with God who tell the prophet to say it. Amen. Oh, brother, you don't, you know, I would rather you don't fight it or come against it. If you, do, if you just don't believe it, and you, I, Lord, I don't understand it, and move on, that's wonderful. Move on. But when you come against it, and you tell, uh, imagine you telling me the things that I believe, and, and that I don't want to, to stand in a confrontation, and you telling me, is that of the Lord? So you telling me I'm deceived. You telling me I'm led by a devil. Brother, I've been called worse things. I'll be called of, uh, uh, you know, and, and this, what jargon I'm using? I'm not using jargon. I'm using the word of the Lord. Amen. And now you, you want to come to me one on one, brother? Let's get in the back room. You and me. And let that angel of the Lord come forth. Let him vindicate the word. Not me, brother. Not me. That same angel that I met. Let him come forth and vindicate. One on one. I'm not dealing with scribes and Pharisees type spirit to, to, to question me. Amen. You know, I'm not doing that. I've died already. Come to my Calvary, brother. Oh, ostracized from job and people and friends and, and close friends. Ostracized. But you know what, brother? My testimony is I love the Lord Jesus. And I have one commission. I'm a prisoner. is to warn the people about the coming judgment. Tell them how to get ready according to the prophet message. Not, brother, Virgil message. According to the prophet message, telling you how to get ready. You can't deny the coats. Can you anyone deny the coats? You know, he said, warn them for me. Warn them. Tell them if they're the righteous. If they did iniquity, you know what is iniquity? To know to do right and they're doing it. That is iniquity. Warn them for me. The blood is off my hands, brother and sister. Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 3 and Ezekiel chapter 33, I think it is, or 33 or 32. Warn them for me, he said. And I've done that, amen. The blood is off my hands. Oh, glory to God. I just want to read it for you as we come to a close. Amen. What is it, brother? Is the word of the Lord coming to you. Amen. Coming to you. Praise God. And if you, please don't reject it. Please don't reject it. Now, if you don't understand it, move on. Leave it alone. Amen. God is pressing me to say this to you. Oh, praise God. Amen. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 3. I'm going to read it and then we'll close. Amen. I'm here by the will of the Lord. This is thus said the Lord, the Bible. This is thus said the Lord, the prophet message. It's not brother Sipasad or brother Virgil saying, now he already instruct me to eat the roll. However, he, uh, uh, Ezekiel 3 said unto me, Son of man, eat thou, eat, eat that the finest. Eat this roll and go and speak unto the children of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto the Son of man, Cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with the roll that I give thee. Then I did eat it. And it was in my mouth as sweet as sweetness of honey. And he said unto me, Son of man, go unto thee, unto the house of Israel, and speak unto thee. If thou art, thou art not sent to a strange people, I'm not sent to anybody except in the prophet message. Sent to a strange people, not, uh, and then continue, but the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto thee, for all the house of Israel are impotent and hard-hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forward forehead Strong against your foreheads, as an adamant, harder than flint, I have made thy forehead. And he told me that in 2020, uh, 2011, I think it was in May, before uh, my pastor of New York City died, he told me, I'll make your, your, uh, your face as flint against them. I have thy forehead, fear not, 
neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Oh, praise God, amen. And he continued to quote, he said, If I say unto the wicked, thou shalt die, and give us him not warning, thou speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked ways to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require of thine hand. Oh, I've told the wicked man. I interject here. Oh, yes, his blood is off my hand. But then continue with verse 20. And when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because he has not given him warning. Because you, thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which is he had done shall not be remembered. And his blood will I require that hand. And I say to thee, brother and sister, blood is off my hands. I've warned them. Oh, I've warned them. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And let's read, uh, uh, read uh, Ezekiel. I wasn't going to do this, but God is laying upon my eyes. He said, close off with that. Amen. Hear what he said. He said, um, oh, praise the name of the Lord. And in Ezekiel chapter 33, he said, he have set a watchman on the wall. And God, and I said that God has made me a watchman. Amen. If I don't blow the trumpet, oh, and take warning. Oh, the, the blood is on my hands. God is going to hold me responsible. I'm a prisoner. But if I blow that trumpet, and I've been blowing that trumpet to you, I've been blowing that seven thundering voices of God in seven church ages for you to come to perfection. You must climb that seven steps to get to the voice of the archangel. If you don't understand it, if you're confused, ask your pastor. And if you're a pastor and you don't understand it, tell the church, I don't understand what he's saying, but I just leave it alone and I move on. Don't try to condemn me. Don't try to condemn the man. Amen. So he said, uh, nevertheless, if you warn the wicked and he turn away, then the, the blood is uh, not on your hand. So here, were, here what uh, I want to read a, a certain part, part he said. And if the wicked would die, amen. Oh, praise the name of Here what God said, warn them for, from me. I forget which part it was. Uh, which one of the scripture he said, warn them for me. That's what he's saying. Amen. And that's my commission, brother. That's my commission, sister. I'm warning you all from him. Amen. Warn them for me, he says. Oh, give warning. Oh, turn, uh, if he turn from the wicked ways. Amen. I'm trying to get where he said, warn them for me. I want to read it for you. Uh, I think it's uh, in, in three. Um, I'm trying, he said, warn them from me. Oh, blessed. I'll, I'll, you know, we could read it another time. Amen. And Ezekiel... Ezekiel 3, he said, warn them for me. Let me see if I could get it. Oh, hallelujah. Now, here's this other thing. And God told me what was going to happen, you know. And let me read this to you. Amen. And, um, and then, uh, you know, he said, um, the son, he, he said, son of man. Uh, this is chapter 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Here it is. Lord told me, warn them from me. And when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, the blood will be upon his hands. Nevertheless, amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. And here it is, um, uh, reading in, uh, I forget where it was, where he, where he said what is going to happen. He told me what is going to happen. He said, son of man, shut thyself up. Amen. He said, they're going to throw you out of the group. That's what he said. I'm trying to get the scripture where he actually, um, I came to the book of Cherub and Chern and came to pass. I made and I saw the wicked to warn them again, the righteous man. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. <coughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hear this. And when the, and this is verse 24, uh, chapter 3. And when the Spirit entered into me, uh, entered into me and set me upon my feet and spake unto me and said unto me, Go, shut thyself within thy house. And that's where I am. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth. And thou shalt be dumb. Amen. And shall not be a reprover. In other words, he said, stop. Don't say no more to them. Don't be a reprover to them. He said, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, He that heareth, let him hear. And he that forbeareth, let him forbear. For they are a rebellious house. But hear this. Um, he said, But the Spirit entered in me and set me upon my feet and spake with me and said unto me, Go shut thyself within thy house. But thou, son of man, behold, 
Here's what bro God showed me in the scripture. What was going to happen before it even happened. I will, uh, he said, but thou son of man, behold, they shall set bands upon thee and shall bind thee with them and thou shalt not go out among them. What he's talking about exactly before they tried to set these bands upon me. No, they set bands upon me. No, I don't go out among them. But hear what he says. But when I speak unto thee, I will open thy mouth and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, he that beareth, let him hear, and he that forbeareth, let him forbear, for they are rebellious. So I say unto you this morning, he that heareth, let him hear, he that forbeareth, let him fear. But you and my, me, brothers and sisters, we are looking for the manifestation of the Son of God. May you receive dynamics upon your mechanics. May the Holy Spirit bind upon you his holy grace and mercy and peace. Be filled with the Spirit. I'm saying like the Lord Jesus, I'm breathing upon you. Receive ye the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Shall we stand? Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It is Jesus in my soul. That's the dynamics. Oh, for I have touched the hem of his garment and his blood had made me whole shall we pray father god we come to the end of the broadcast lord i you had me say those things O oh lord to put it in record O oh lord god it's undisputable lord god it's your holy spirit you told me to do these things lord and you will vindicate it and confirm it to the people not virgil's word but your word oh glory to god hallelujah amen lord god now i pray O oh father that those who have heard the word of the living god may that dynamics come upon them may it stir them to come to the manifestation of the son of god let them know their promises lord their promises to be like like you to walk like you to talk like you because you want to be in them forgive them for their sins and their iniquity wash away their iniquity lord we pray help them during this week lord we don't know what's going to take place seeing that the squeeze is on seeing all these things in this world is taking place father oh god help your people it's getting very very hard very very tough lord and it's going to get worse so now you may you have preeminence amongst your people we pray in the name of jesus christ amen and amen and amen Take the name of Jesus with you. So the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you with his grace. Child of sorrow and of woe, it with joy and comfort give you. Take his name where you go, precious name. Oh, how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven, precious name. Oh, how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven. Praise God. Amen.